So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the iFlight Nazgul 6S build. Now, this is a bind and fly quadcopter. And what we will cover in this video is the build construction, the tune, the flight footage, the flight review, my first impressions and how well it flew. Also, the accessories they provide you with and some other things as well. So let's get right into this. Now, this quadcopter comes in two versions. We have the 6S and also the 4S version. This is currently the 6S version. And I personally think this is, might be one of the best 6S BNFs out there currently. Now, this is running the iFlight Shing 2207-1800KV. They have a lot of power. The really nice motor. And listen to this. Not even a sound. They're super, super smooth. It's crazy. The windings in there look really great. Let's actually get a little closer look at the windings here. So you can see how well the windings are. They're just really nice. And if we take a look at the bottom, we have a screw to remove the bell if you needed to clean it out or change it if it got bent or something happened. So that's really nice. And also we have some 3D printed parts to protect the overall frame from damage right here. As you can tell, it does add some sort of motor protection because the frame is slightly recessed a bit more than the motor here. So that does reduce your chances of breaking a motor slightly, but it's still very thoughtful. Now, moving down the line here, we can see the build construction is really nice. And out of the box, I didn't have any loose screws. And that's something you always want to check when you get a bind and fly quadcopter or a pre-built quadcopter. Always check the screws, wiggle the arms a little, see if anything's loose, check the flight controller, because sometimes, you know, the employees get, you know, tired or maybe his wrist is hurting and then he'll just, you know, half-ass the job. Um, but that's not the case here, but I did get a couple frames like that before, or a couple quadcopters, which can make a bit of a nightmare sometimes and not a very well out of the box experience. So always keep that in mind. Also check the motor screws as well. That's one of the first things I usually check with a bind and fly. Now, moving down to the the arms here the arms are 4.5 to 5 millimeters in thickness they're around 4.9 i think or 4.8 i don't have the most accurate scale but they're above four millimeters so this will take quite a lot of damage and that's something really great you want and there is not a lot of flex so you're using really really great carbon now if we take a look at the bottom you can also fly this bottom mount if you'd like to you can just fit a strap right under the uh, esc here because everything is very well spaced inside on the build and uh, you can easily do that if you wanted to. And as you can tell, they've even added some more extra 3D printed parts to protect the frame from landing. So it'll stay in pristine shape, which I find really nice and very thoughtful here. Now, if we take a look on the inside, this is their budget 6S ESC. It's a really great ESC. And what they've done also is they've added a low ESR capacitor in the back right here. And um, I did notice some noise towards the top end of the throttle. But after watching the video, the HD video, I noticed that I think it has high of D and I might need a little bit more of a tune on a 6S. 6S quad cops is a little bit harder to tune. That's why they're not really recommended for beginners because they can be a bit more difficult than a 4S to get it working properly. However, here they've done a pretty good job. You're going to enjoy the living crap out of it. You, I didn't notice the high D flutters towards uh, inside my FPV feed until I watched the HD video. It's not that bad, but that does explain why my motors were hot at times. Plus the weather wasn't helping. So there's a lot of factors into that. And I'm not going to get into that. I will take it out and do a tuning session at a cooler day and see how well that handles. Now, for a flight controller you're using an F405 chip, which is an F4 microcontroller, which is absolutely phenomenal here. You're not going to need anything more than that currently on such a build here. Now, as you can tell, the flight controller also has some dampening going on for it here. These are really nice. I've never seen these before, so that's really great. These would help the gyro stay clean from any vibrations coming from the frame and overall give you a better experience. And as you can tell here, we have VTX. Now, the VTX does have smart audio, but it's not smart audio. So if you're going in there and you go to smart audio in the on-screen display to change the channel, it's not going to work. You need to go to the tramp protocol because this VTX is using the tramp protocol. Keep that in mind. Now, for the camera, they're using a Cadex camera, which is really great. I didn't have any issues with it. It's like a mid-range, budget-ish, great camera. Uh, I would consider that's where the Cadex brand would land into cameras. A lot of companies are using it because they are providing uh, very good quality cameras for a really good price, which will not impair your visual needs in order to fly great, which is something really good to have here. Now, if you take a look at the inside of the camera, you can see that there's even 3D printed parts to add more structural integrity and also add an offset so they could fit this micro camera into place here. I think it is a micro. Yeah, it looks like a micro camera. And um, yeah, I think it's very well thought through and the execution is absolutely superb for the price you're paying for this is insane. If we take a closer look at the ESC joints here, we see that this is really nicely built and uh, was really well thought through here. And um, I I'm pretty impressed, I might say. I actually am. I, I really like this. 
Now, a culprit of noise, if we still do end up getting with noise, would be the very long uh, battery wires here. These can introduce a lot of noise. Uh, so you might want to trim that down, but it's totally fine. There wasn't that bad of noise. I'm just nitpicking towards the end of the throttle. And I think it's more of a tuning issue than anything else. And we also see here is another 3D printed part, which is actually holding the XM Plus radio. And what's really nice about this is that you can easily bind it without having to take everything apart because the bind button is right there. So you'd hold that in, but off a USB, the receiver wouldn't boot, so you're gonna have to use the battery. So make sure your propellers are off, then you hold the bind button, then plug in the battery, then you could bind here. And they even give you these antennas, which you would have to install yourself. Just slide them into the hole, put the XM Plus antenna in there, or RXSR, whatever antenna you got it with, and these are gonna be well protected, and you're not gonna be breaking them anytime soon unless you flip over and something happens. But uh, for a, from a prop strike perspective, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Now, something I really liked here was the VTX antenna, which they provide you with. They have this 3D printed part on it that makes it super easy to assemble. I, I really do love this. I really like this. I've never, I should put this more on my quad. It adds more weight, but it enables you to tighten this thing down really good, and it's not gonna be going anywhere soon. And this gives it some little flex with that 3D printed part. The 3D printed part's quality, the print quality is superb as well. I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised. As you can tell, when you crash, it does have some give, which is really great. This way, you will you have less probability of breaking the VTX antenna, because some of them are pretty expensive. And this was actually a pretty good one. I had no problems uh, with the video feed, along with the uh, transmitter itself. I, I really did enjoy it. And they also, you can buy these little extra kits. I don't know if they come with it, but I got sent these. Unfortunately, I don't have this type of GoPro. And when you get this kit, they even give you an ND filter with it. That's insane. However, I wish they would have given me the one for a session. They also have one for sessions, um, but I got this one instead. So I just ended up mounting my own here. You could even mount them with, you know, just zip ties. It holds really well. It has enough place for that. It was very well thought through, even though they even have the 3D printed parts that will go right into the frame and they provide everything you need for that. Now it's overall flight characteristics. What I can tell you is that it's uh, pretty responsive. On a 1500 milliamp success, it, you could kind of feel the weight, but it's still very fast. And I'm still unable to figure out if these props, these are the iFlight 5140s. I don't know if they are fluttering in the air when I put a 1500 or is it just high D. Now in the FPV video feed, I didn't see you know the, the characteristics of high D towards the top end of the throttle, but it could also be these iFlight propellers here that are kind of fluttering towards the end of the throttle or the top end of the throttle. So it's very difficult to find out. I'm gonna have to go out and tune it again because when I used the 1500 milliamp after the 13, I noticed it a little bit more in the HD footage, but in the FPV feed, I didn't notice any of that. Everything looked perfect. So the camera is doing really great in covering up all these things. But I, after you know coming back and watching the HD feed, video feed, uh, I did notice that. Now these propellers are really good, very quiet. Uh, they seem to cut in the air pretty great. And again, these are 5.1 inch props. So I haven't tested it with anything else because I assumed that they would have it tuned for this propeller and it kind of seemed that way. Prop wash uh, was okay, but after watching the HD video, I saw it was, it needs a little bit more, but it's it's pretty good out of the box. I was I'm pretty amazed with, with how well this whole thing or the whole experience was, because all you gotta do here, all you gotta do when you receive it, just install your props, bind your receiver, and make sure your modes are correctly, and you're good to go, you just start flying. That's all I did with this one, which is something I really like. Now, something you need to take into consideration is that the propellers are gonna go on backwards. Now, not like backwards like this, but like, you know, opposite of how they're supposed to go because they have the them reversed to spin outwards instead of inwards. Now, if you don't know how propellers go, especially if you're new, uh, the way that I go about knowing which propeller goes where is I don't read anything. Uh, if, if they're not reversed, these are reversed right now in beta flight. So if they're not reversed, when you put them in, I like to put all of them in like this. So you have like a square kind of. So you have like a square like this. And usually on the inner sides, you want the high side to be up. So right now, these are reversed, so it's like this. These are coming down. So the lower side is on the inside. But then you would flip these over if it's not reversed. So and again, if it's not reversed, you want the high side to be on the inside, and you want it to go down like this, and you want these to go down like, those, like that way. So you want the high side always on the inside, and then coming out, kind of like making a triangle over the quadcopter. Now, if they're reversed, obviously it's gonna be reversed. It's gonna be like an upside down triangle. So you'd want the low side on the, in the, on the inner part, and you want the high side on the outer part. And these are reversed, and you double check that in the beta flight. When you go to the motors tab, it'll have like under the picture, it'll say reverse. So keep that in mind and be careful. Now, in terms of the XC60, it is kind of sketchy that it can fall over and smack a propeller. So what I was doing is, a oh, good thing I have uh, batteries with long 
batter leads. This is just the four as just an example. This is what I was doing because, it, the, you know, this is one of the biggest problems with top mount frames, in my opinion. I mean, this is the biggest problem I always usually face is how to mount it. So the way that I was installing them is I was putting the strap to hold the XT60 here, and then I would plug it in. And uh, that would, you know, that reduce the chances of it actually, that, this way it'll never, there's no way in hell you'd fall and cut the, uh, cut either the battery or the XT60 coming out from the board here. So it'll reduce your chances of a really big problem. So keep that in mind. If you have shorter, you know, you, you have to get creative at times. I wish there was a better solution for this right now. They also give you this anti-slip uh, sticker here, which I recommend you add. It really does help because carbon fiber is pretty slippery. As you can tell, I can't even move this well, as long as you have pressure on it. So it's really great here. And if these get dirty, just, just wipe them down with a wet cloth and uh, it'll be good. So overall, if you are looking for a nice bind and fly premium quadcopter, I think this is going to be a really great one. It flies absolutely phenomenal for a freestyle. It does have mad speed, um, but sometimes depending on the battery, you could also feel the weight here. But um, it is like flying a high KV 4S mid weight build. That's the way I could put it. Efficiency could be good. I think you can get four and a half minutes of flight time if you're cruising. Um, and again, the overall execution, I have nothing to complain about. And if you have something to complain about, let us know down in the comment section. The motors are insanely smooth. I mean, uh, uh, they're just really nice. And the 2207 size is a really great size as well. And um, they provide with everything you, you could possibly need here. And I'm gonna leave you guys in the field when I took it out. Now I might be saying a lot about the prop wash, but there was some prop wash, but I couldn't see it in an FPV video feed. But then again, I'll let you guys watch it, you check it out. And let me know if you'd be interested in one of these down in the comment section, and I'll have some coupons also for you guys. And don't forget to check the links down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. All right, so this is my second flight now. I've put a 1500 milliamp uh, 6S in there. And excuse me while I'm speaking, I might screw up here and there because I'm paying attention. Now the tune still looks good. There's a little, it's a bigger battery, that's why, so it's okay. Let's just give it that. Feels really light for a 6S build. It feels crazy. It feels like I'm flying a 4S high KV right now. That's really nice. Yeah, I felt the weight right there with the other battery. First flight, I used a 1300 milliamp 6S. Right now, I'm using a 15. I want to see its efficiency right now more than its power. So, I want to see how long it'll actually last for. With a couple tricks here and there. I'm not going to go too aggressive because I don't want to break it just yet. And I need to get the review and get a feel for it, see if anything happens to it. The motor's really great. The uh, tune on it is good also. The prop wash handling is really great. But then again, I'm using a special propellers. I'm using the iFlight 5140s. They're really thin. And I think if you go on more aggressive prop on this, you do have a higher probability of possibly burning the motors. Because they are getting somewhat hot right now, but the weather again isn't really helping. It's like 37 degrees right now. So it's really hot. There's a bit of noise towards the top end. I've noticed this on a 5S and the 6S. I've also ran it on 5S to do pre-flight checks here. Um, it's really fast, really responsive. But right now it's just really heavy because of that 1500 uh, milliamp. So. Nice, let's see prop wash. Oh, it's okay, it's good. Let's do a hard turn. That's nice. So this, the responsiveness, what I say, if you're going fast, um, I would give it like a seven out of 10. You still kind of pull back a little before you can, uh, before it goes to the direction you want it to go here. So right now, let's just see. Oh, it's, it's okay, it's good. But then again, this is a heavy battery right now. But I must say, I'm really impressed with the 6S uh, BNF here. Really nice. Very smooth. It's not, it, it feels a little bit loose when you make turns. Like it's not drifting because of a bad tune. Just I think the way that it's tuned, it's, it feels much smoother than like a, a racing tune. So you can kind of feel it drift here. We've been flying for two minutes and a half here. All right, let's take it easy. I want to see uh, how long we can fly with this. Prop wash there is really great. I've have, I have other quals that don't even do that good. But I think if you, again, I think if you use a higher pitch uh, propeller on this, you do have a high probability of uh, 
overheating the motors unless you change the tune slightly to to because I think the way they tuned it here they tuned it based upon their prop and uh, because it feels really nice on their prop I still haven't tried other props whoa we almost killed it there we don't want that my GoPro's on there Whee. it's really nice really responsive I know if I get in a tight pickle if I punch it I'll get out of there obviously if I have a full batter here Three minutes and 30 seconds of flight time, that's really great. I think I just fail-saved. I should lift up my control a little bit. I think I just fail-saved a little over there. Whoa! Yeah, the tune's really great, you saw that. Like, there's no, um, there's no bounce back. But also the rates are kind of, I don't wanna say low, I think they're like medium, medium-ish here. Uh, I should. This is an efficiency test, and I keep punching out towards the always towards the end of my battery. It just keeps pu punching out, which is uh, not a good thing. So we're at 3.7 right now. I really like how it feels. It has power, responsiveness, good tune, and oh, we almost killed it there. Still trying to get the hang of it here. So you can, you can feel the weight on that corner. So when I, when I make a turn here, you can kind of feel the weight. But then again, the battery is, uh, is I don't want to push too much on the battery here because it's right at the end. Uh, I think the current is not um, set up correctly. I don't think that's the correct current here. And there's also something very important to take note of this, uh, which is that it comes with the propellers reversed. So be very careful. So make sure you put them reversed. If you don't want that, you have to change it inside beta flight. Engine. I think they should have put a bigger warning for that. All right, that was a good flight.